Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel if you've seen any of my other videos and if not, well, welcome to my entire channel. <laughs> Today I'm just going to be upgrading Dobie's tank, my Cresta Gecko, to a larger enclosure because she's getting to the size that she probably needs an upgrade. So, with that being said, I'm Beth and this is BMC Reptile Room. <laughs> So I'll just start off with how I disinfect a second-hand enclosure. I've personally never bought a brand new enclosure because I think they are ridiculously priced. <laughs> I use F10 disinfectant, which is a veterinary disinfectant. You can also use a bleach and water mix or vinegar and water mix. You do want to make sure you cover every aspect of the tank because you don't know the condition of the animal previously housed in the tank. So please spray the crap out of it. <laughs> After disinfecting, you'll want to rinse thoroughly to ensure your animal doesn't come in contact with any of the disinfectant you did use. Please ensure any disinfectant that you do choose to use is animal safe. I always remove thermostat and hydrometer dials because they are inaccurate and I feel like the tape would harbor bacteria. So to create the drain system I'm using in this tank, I'm using an old Sheddies bottle. I've never actually used the product myself because I've never had any problems with any of my animal shedding, but you can literally use any bottle you want. So I cut a hole on each side of my bottle which allows the water to pass through so I can suction it out when the water gets too high, if it ever does. Then I used 100% silicone to secure it to the floor of the tank. Silicone is water resistant and won't give out over time to water exposure unless it's really old or you suck at siliconing. And I probably am one of those people that suck at siliconing, so you're probably in the clear. <laughs> then you're going to want to wait at least four to six hours to let the silicone adhere to the bottom of the tank so there's no off-gassing and nothing that your animal's breathing in that's harmful for them. Ensure that it's not tacky anymore and you personally don't smell any off-gassing coming from it because if you can smell it, your animal's breathing all of that in. <laughs> and now to take Dobie out and put her into a little container, which is really bad. I feel horrible, but we're putting her in there anyway. So here you'll see me removing Dobie's old drainage system. This is the same one I put into her newer tank, so super easy to remove when you're done with it. Then I'm just putting some slate rocks around the opening of the drainage system so that none of the bio balls actually get caught inside of it and restrict any of the water flow happening so that I can suction it easier and maintain the tank. Normally I would use window screen here, but instead I'm using plastic chicken wire because I had this on hand at the moment. I will probably be changing it out later, but for now it's gonna do its job. The chicken wire acts as a separation between topsoil and the bio balls so that it doesn't all get mixed together and create muddy, dirty water at the bottom of the tank. So normally you would put brand new soil into a brand new tank and change it all out and do a bedding change, but I do have a litter, litter, a litter. Yeah, no, cause isopods and springtails are cats now. No, okay. I have isopods and springtails in my bedding, so I didn't wanna throw it out. And the rest is pretty much self-explanatory, so enjoy. So 
So when I actually bought this tank from the girl I did, she gave me a whole bunch of things and one of the things included a waterfall, which I incorporated into Dobie's tank. Tank to bigger tank. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually so funny. Anyways, thank you for joining in on another video. If you guys want to see anything else in this reptile room, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. But other than that, I guess screw you. <laughs> Whoa!